Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen of the press, and welcome to the first, albeit a brief, press conference, the first one of 2017. By now, all of you are familiar with the way these press conferences run. Her Excellency will open with a statement, followed by some remarks by the Honorable Acting Deputy Governor. Um, so now, over to you, Your Excellency. Okay, thanks. Well, again, nice to see everybody. I think this is the the best attended press conference that we've had for some time. Um, I hope it's clear to everyone what the content of the press conference is today. Um, let me just reiterate um, that it is to clarify for the public um, the rules guiding the conduct of public officers during an election campaign. So we're not here to talk about the election or the election <coughs> campaign or anything to do with the Electoral Commission. Um, this is about the public service, and that's why myself and the, uh, and the acting deputy governor are here, just to clarify that. Um, so it's great to greet you. I, as as um, Anesta said, it's the first time we've met this year. Um, we, will, we will talk about this subject um, now, but I'm hoping by the end of January, we'll also be able to have uh, a press conference, uh, including the two of us, but others around where we are with the um, human resources uh, transformation program that we did a press conference on some months ago. Mm -hmm. um, so again, Happy New Year. And it's great to be able to, for the first time, um, uh, do a press conference with the acting deputy governor, Lyndall Simpson, who you all know uh, well, either from when she was here before mm -hmm. or since her, her arrival in December. Um, so again, I just want to clarify why we want to speak to the public about rules that concern public servants during an, electing, uh, an election campaign. You might ask, why don't we just disseminate this information within the public service, and why does the public need to know? Um, well, actually, we have disseminated that information within the public service, but we wanted to ensure that the public is aware of what public officers can and cannot do during an election campaign according to our laws and constitution, as well as general orders, which are the guidelines for public officer behavior. As you know, every day, the public comes into contact with public officers in their daily activities, so it's good that the public can understand for themselves the professional and impartial conduct they can expect from public servants during this time. As you know, it, it doesn't need uh, me to say that. An election is a sensitive time, and we want to be sure that the public is served well and appropriately by public officers during this period. The key issue here is the need to maintain and being seen to maintain impartiality of the public service. So without any further preamble, I'd like to invite Mrs. Simpson to outline the, guid the guidelines and where, uh, what the general order says about, about this matter, and then we'll be happy to answer questions relating to this. Yeah. Thank you, A.G. Good afternoon, members of the press. The overarching general orders that we want to remind the public of, as well as public officers, is General Orders 316, which provides that officers are expressly forbidden to participate actively on behalf of any party or candidate in any election to the legislature. They are sorry, expressly forbidden to act as agents, sub-agents, or canvassers at elections of this nature. Coming out of this general order, we would have, at the time of the last general elections, advised the public and public officers of a number of guidelines that should guide their conduct during an election. At this time, I would like to go through those guidelines again for the public and for public officers. Public officers must maintain political impartiality at all times. Public officers must exercise at all times the proper restraint in matters of political controversy and should not conduct themselves in such a way 
that would erode their political impartiality and threaten the confidence of the public in the Montserrat Public Service. Public officers must not express opinions about any party or candidate on matters of political controversy to the press or in letters to the editor, nor in books and articles, nor by any other printed or electronic means, including social media. Public officers must not allow the expression of their personal political views to constitute so strong or so comprehensive a commitment to one political party or independent candidate as to inhibit or appear to inhibit loyal and effective service to ministers or members of the Legislative Assembly who are part of any other party. Public officers must take particular care to express comments with moderation particularly about matters for which their own ministers are responsible, to avoid comment altogether about matters of, controver of, controver of controversy, sorry, affecting the responsibility of their own ministers and to avoid personal attacks. Public officers must not hold office in any political party or make political speeches. Public officers with the written approval of the deputy governor may act as election officials during an election. Public officers must not act as party agents, sub-agents, or canvassers. A public officer who is intending to run for political office must resign from his or her post before being pu publicly adopted, named, or declared as a prospective candidate for any political party or as an independent candidate. Candidates who are not elected are not entitled to reinstatement to their former public service positions. Candidates who wish to rejoin the public service have to do so through the established procedures of application for any advertised posts. Political stickers are not to be posted in any departmental office of the government of Montserrat or on any vehicle or any other resource owned by the government. Public officers must not wear political party or parliamentary candidate t-shirts, caps, buttons, pins, or any other similar items to work. Public officers must not take part in any political activity when on duty or in uniform or on official premises. As a matter of principle, public officers must maintain a low profile during an election period so as to avoid the risk of appearing to be in conflict or in agreement with any political party or independent candidate. Public officers must govern themselves in accordance with these guidelines and the appropriate sections of the general orders. And we wish also to remind that breaches of conduct will be handled in accordance with the provisions of the General Orders and the Public Service Act or any other law which shall come into force which may supersede these. We have in this matter to clarify for the public. Tell me again, please. To clarify for the for public, the, public. Mm -hmm. the conduct of, of public, public servants office. during an election campaign. Can you report to us? therefore, that you have done some extensive um, education for our public mm -hmm. officers on this mm -hmm. matter? Mm -hmm. It is normal at every election cycle that public officers are reminded of the do's and don'ts during an election campaign. At the time of the last general election in 2015, extensive... 40. 2015, 14, sorry, extensive guidance was provided to public officers. And now that nomination day has passed, that guidance will go out to public officers again. Uh, uh, see, I'm a little confused. Mm -hmm. And uh, when I saw this invitation, I responded, but I thought this was, I, I somewhat misread, if you'd like, maybe, or misunderstood mm -hmm. exactly what this was all about. 
but public edu education mm -hmm. is to be provided to the public. Mm -hmm. And these are some of the things that would form part of that public education. So I'm not understanding our purpose here. Now, I suspect that you would expect us to go out and tell the public and publicize these things that you are saying to the public officers has little to do with the public. Can I, can I address I, that yes, point? Yes, please. Um, first of all, the pub, it has a lot to do with the public. As I said in my introductory remarks, mm -hmm. the public needs to know what they can expect from public servants. You know, they are in daily contact with public servants. They may see things, you know, on, on social media and so on. And we think it's very important that the public knows what is and what is not proper conduct by public servants. So we're not doing public education around an election, how you can vote, where you can vote, what your rights are. Mm -hmm. We are doing, uh, we are just letting the public know that their public servants, after all, public servants are servants to the public, what it is, what conduct that is expected of them so that they, you know, so that they can know that and not have other expectations, for example. What are you expecting of the press following this? Um, it's completely up to you. We will publish this on our, on our Facebook. We will have a, a film, I think, the, the, the film of this. So we will, we will publish this ourselves on our usual media outlets, and it's completely up to the press to decide whether beyond this discussion um, you, you wish to take it further. Your Excellency, you've just opened up a whole thing that how very deeply, I'm just coming from a, from a, um, <clears throat> a consultation uh, on our national mm -hmm. ICT information, mm -hmm. communication technology, so information, media, 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 print, press, and that's all part of it. And you see, when you talk about it's published on some website or something, you're not really dealing with, especially in an election, we're dealing with all the people. Hmm. How many of the people are That is why Mr. Roach was speaking to you. That's right, but I'm saying to you that this matter, what you're doing here, is not really for us, and it's the, the public, they're not concerned about how, um, and I'm speaking for them. They're not concerned about how public servants should govern themselves. What are they supposed to do? What sh is their recourse? What should they do if they walk into uh, an, a public office and meet the people they're discussing mm -hmm. the election? What are they supposed to do? Well, if they have knowledge of the, the guidelines that have been gi given to public servants, they will know that certain behavior is appropriate and certain behavior isn't. If they think that they see inappropriate behavior, they have the right to report it. And mm -hmm. towards what end? As Mrs. Simpson said, mm -hmm. if there is a breach of general orders, in other words, general orders guides the conduct of public mm -hmm. servants, then uh, disciplinary action can be taken or other kinds of action can be taken. You know, or the, or the person can be better informed or discussion happens or whatever. But what we're trying to do is we're trying to protect the integrity of the public service. And a large part of that integrity is impartiality. There's an election taking place. It, is a, it behooves us to make comments both internally and externally. This has been done before. You'll be aware of that. This it's done every time no, there's an this election. Has, this has never been Not done. in this format, perhaps, yes. but the um, communication to the general public about what is expected of public servants, I am told, has been done before in elections. It is a regular thing that, um, that the government has done. They, what they did is simply <clears throat> sent the guidelines to the media, mm -hmm. um, at which and the media. I have published these guidelines. I have mm -hmm. been critical Fine. of one or two so of we've read them out to you in so instead what, of yeah, only sent them to you. So, and, you know, and I don't there really again, Your Excellency, they should have been just simply sent to us. Really. Well, you might prefer that. Others might prefer something else. If you didn't well, want to come, come, you're welcome not to come. I mean, yeah. I know that the, the 
the, the, the thing. I almost didn't come, but, uh, but particularly after this meeting today, mm -hmm. I said, no, let me come here to let you know that what you talk about, about the accountability and holding the public service, we are behind you all the way 100%. Mm -hmm. And I just tried to get some public servants who are in a certain position to be on the way on that. So mm -hmm. really, <laughs> that's the only reason I came here. Mm -hmm. But the, the rest of it... it sounds know, to me like a very good reason, Mr. Roach. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm canvassing to get people on board to understand what is going on. I, I, I have in front of me here this thing that tells me since 1994 we are talking about the reform and all these things. This should have been so well down, but mm -hmm. it gets nowhere. Mm -hmm. um, I've, I've chatted enough. Mm -hmm. James? Your Excellency, good to have you, uh, Mrs. Simpson. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking along the, the same lines as, as Mr. Roach, um, because I've mentioned before that in, in previous elections that the information would have been sent. Um, for us as, at Radio Montserrat, mm -hmm. similarly as the Elections Commission did, they sent information, mm -hmm. and I personally read them mm -hmm. so that people can understand. Mm -hmm. But um, as you mentioned, it's, it's different. Mm -hmm. you know, um, my my um, concern is, was there something that was said? You did mention um, clarification. Something was said in, in contravention of, of the um, of general orders? Mm -hmm. No. No. So why, no. why then is it a clarification rather than you know, a reminder of sorts. You could to, call to it people. either clarification either. reminder. Either. Yeah. yeah. Happy New Year to Governor and Deputy Governor. Um, I kind of have the same perspective as the two previous gentlemen. Um, I would want to commend also on, on, on this step because I think uh, it's one thing to send out information, but mm -hmm. it's another thing to communicate information. information. And mm -hmm. I think um, to the two of you being here is a signal that you want, you wish to communicate um, the seriousness of this information. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm exactly. Mm -hmm. Off the top of my head. Um, but one, what I want to hear more of is if I as an ordinary citizen or ordinary resident here on Montserrat goes mm -hmm. into a government of, um, um, institution mm -hmm. and because I am probably known to be aligned to a certain political entity, is treated in failure indifferently. Mm -hmm. um, what are the steps that I can take in reporting that? I think that needs to get across, not just the general orders and what the general orders say, mm -hmm. but steps in terms of reporting incidents where persons um, would have experienced discrimination based on political affiliation, one. And two, if for some reason there's an employer. Remember Montserrat is a small mm -hmm. community, and everyone knows everyone. And so persons might be afraid of reporting certain incidents because they don't want it to get back that they were the ones that reported and then that person, mm -hmm. whatever, confusion or conflict that can arise. Mm -hmm. So is there, a, a, um, is there a way that person's identity um, would, be, would not be revealed if they make a complaint, mm -hmm. et cetera? Okay. Um, as the person charged with responsibility for the day-to-day -day operations of the public service. A complaint made to me, whether in writing or verbally, by a member of the public will be investigated as required. Persons who choose not to go that route, there is a well-established complaints commission. And one of the things that I have been advised is that persons who have chosen that route have not found reason to, you know, the, you know, the, the source of concerns that we have about confidentiality, etc. that they, you know, that process has worked really well. So there is that option as well. So you can either come into my office or go the route of the Complaints Commission and your, your complaint will be heard. Or write to you. Or, or write to me. And I think the fact that we are here indicates that we are very serious. We take this very seriously, that for the public service to remain accountable, it is not just the governor or myself who has a role to play in that, but the general public also has, you know, they have that role to play in ensuring that the public service remains fair, impartial. And that is why, 
you know, it is so important that we communicate with the public through whatever medium from time to time as to what we expect from civil servants. So if they observe breaches or things are going contrary to that, they know that, you know, it's time for me to say something and let us see where it goes. Steps in terms of reporting. Yeah, did you didn't speak on that. Mm -hmm. um, you, you, you said... Um, you write to the, <coughs> you write to the DG. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Or the... Or the Complaints Commission. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, again, going back to the whole thing that the whole situation of Monsa is a small community and everybody's mm -hmm. related to everybody. Mm -hmm. um, if you're not related, you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, how do you deal with the assumptions? Uh, because this particular candidate is a relative of mine, mm -hmm. you people go up the assumption that I am supporting that candidate or, or I am campaigning for that, can, that candidate. How, do you, how, how, how would you deal with that in terms of if it's reported to your office? No, if I get a report that Public Officer X appears to be, com, um, to be campaigning for Candidate Roach, mm -hmm. then I would not, as a matter of course, you know, make a determination right then and there. The matter has to be investigated. Mm -hmm. All sides have to be heard. And then you make a determination. The governor has promised that you'll soon be back to deal with issues surrounding the public service and this whole public service reform. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. I need to know how we're going and, and what's going on. There's so many. I get the complaints. Mm -hmm. I get a lot. Mm -hmm. And they, they vary. And I think there's some that I have touched on with the governor. But mm -hmm. I have specific things that I would like to probably bring. And not necessarily in a press conference, really. Mm -hmm. So I know your door is open. Um, but I, I just want to say, it, it, you just described, for example, the process. Mm -hmm. If somebody were to make a complaint, mm -hmm. or, or to say something, or to say, I observed this. Um, and that you, it, would, it has to go, to a, to go through a process. Yes. Um, the thing is, with, with the election away, we uh, 14 days away. Mm -hmm. About 14 mm -hmm. days away, I think. Mm -hmm. Is it? Oh, only 12, yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. 12 days away. Yeah, I didn't even remember yesterday was nomination day, but there you go. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> it's not an easy thing you're undertaking. To, to, to be saying that, you know, uh, somebody comes and, because mm -hmm. the door is open for people to hear something and, and misinterpret it. And so you, you get three of those things and then you're thrown into a, a tailspin on, on something that the public servant, they'll have to prove that the public servant did what they did and all of that kind of thing. So um, I don't know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you see, there are, other things, in my opinion, rather than a public servant canvassing for a for a for a for a thing, for a for a um, mm -hmm. for a candidate, and where can they do this? Mm -hmm. Can they, at the end of the day, go out and go up on a political platform and support a candidate? No. Sorry, what are you and asking? Sorry, can sorry. a public servant get up on a political platform and say, I support this gentleman, and so on and so on and no, so on and so on? No, it's clear from no, what, what no, the no, DG that, that said. No, that is not allowed. No. That's not allowed? No. I'm no. not so sure, but anyhow, I'm mm -hmm. not going to. Yeah. I'm not I think it was quite that, clear in what she, yeah. she read out. Mm -hmm. But, um, the... uh, and if so, he has to resign, basically, no. in order to do that. In order to be a, a candidate, he has to yes. I'm not even so sure that that applies these days. But anyhow, it applies. Um, I'm not going to. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you, you are telling me, you're confirming to me that that applies. It yes. applies. And that's because of general orders. Yes. yes. Are you sure that isn't something somewhere along the line in the course of things that they can do this, etc., cetera, etc.? Cetera? If it's in general orders, if it's covered by general orders, it applies. And for the benefit of candidates. But mm -hmm. it's late now anyway. Mm -hmm. It's late now, really. Um, you did say that they would have to go through the process of applying if the post is advertised. Mm -hmm. So in this short space of time, 14 days to go, I would have sent in my resignation. So we only have 14 days. Mm -hmm. Would that person's job be advertised within the 14 days? Um, not necessarily. What we're saying is that if you... 
if you are, if, if you wish to, you know, to contest an election, then you're required to resign your post, mm -hmm. you know, and rejoining the public service if in, you know in the event that you lose that contest is not automatic you must then go through a recruitment process you apply for a post as advertised that i just left 15 days ago well <laughs> you could apply for another post it doesn't have to be the same post that you're applying well, I for that even, I don't have to you could you, to do that. you don't have to resign to do that but we're saying that you know no. that is that that is what you those need to do those are the options um, there is you, you ready to say something no um <laughs> The thing about the thing about that that, that that whole thing about resigning brings me to the public new public administration act, mm -hmm. and maybe I should ask you right now, because see, we now talk about general orders. Never heard general orders mentioned so many times mm -hmm. in in at any sitting that I've had. Mm -hmm. But and I know that you are trying to get these things in expressing your anxiety really to get something on the book so that you can have some teeth. Mm -hmm. um, some people reminded me a little early at my previous meeting that they also fought Steve and they still never can't bite. But anyway, <laughs> um, so I hope we're not doing that. <laughs> but uh, how are we doing with that? Just, just as a yeah. prelude to... Um, I think uh, as, as, as we've said on a number of occasions, um, the whole the whole project of redrafting laws is a lengthy process. So what we've done is we've taken shortcuts on certain matters um, which, uh, which will amend the general orders. So until we have regulations that are written and passed for the, um, the, the Public Administration Act, which are actually under draft and under review right now. There is a draft that's being reviewed, and we hope it'll be introduced shortly. We are taking steps to look at things that need to be changed and can be changed by what's called an establishment circular. So there have been a number of things um, that we'll be announcing, um, uh, you know, that, that we've changed. And we will continue to do that. We continue to find things, you know, where we could have um, broader guidelines or things that are inconsistent maybe with the labor, the labor legislation and so on. But we do anticipate in the first quarter of this year that we should have those regulations ready. Are those regulations, oh, but my, my question really was, um, we, are those things that you're putting in general orders, are they already there? Are they there now? Which ones? The new ones? Yes. Yeah, they're ready to be, to be enacted or they're, they're, the, the legal part of them has been done and we are aware of them. Cabinet has reviewed them and they will be announced after the election. And is this, uh, will this be, uh, how, how are they implemented? Will this have to go to the legislature no. or this is something no. the government no. can do? No, they're, gen they're general orders. They, <clears throat> they, they will apply because the governor uh, and the DG have the have the authority to change general orders through an establishment circular. Ah. It's just that they require legal drafting because yeah, you have well, to compare it with that, other. But I'm yeah. just talking about getting them actually implemented. They will be implemented. Process, whether you have to do an SRNO. No, mm -mm. Well, no. They, no they, what they, about the uh, regulations for the Public Administration Act? Will that just be a uh, governing council? Like all, those, like all re regulations. I don't think it has to go to the Legislative Assembly because yeah, the, the law is already passed. Yes, yeah. these are regulations. Yeah. Just, just, just putting that there's a little pressure on you here. You can get it going. You can <laughs> I, I, I have been getting it going. It, we're, very <laughs> we're very close to, to being able to have the new regulations. In the meantime, you know, we're fixing things that need fixing in general orders because they serve as regulations. Yeah. Until we have those regulations in place, mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. So, well, that perhaps is good news. So, half hour is up, Miss Anesta. Yeah. Thank you very yeah. much. Yeah. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That concludes our brief press conference. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen of the press. Okay.